Hello friends, welcome back to another episode of Reddit Pro Revenge. This episode contains three stories. The first story is how stealing $3,000 resulted in a $125,000 loss in the future. The second story is how a lead video game designer deals with a petty lawyer in a creative way. Finally, the last story is about a family disowning their daughter and having it come back to bite them. I hope you stay for all these stories today and subscribe for future videos. This story is titled, Had My Half-Brother Removed From The Will After He Stole Money From Our Father With Alzheimer's. Shortly after my father was diagnosed with Alzheimer's, my formerly estranged half-brother quit his job and moved in to help take care of my dad. Though there really wasn't enough money, it was agreed to pay him around $300 a week to make up for his missing income. During this time, my half-brother abruptly acquired power of attorney and usurped medical and financial decisions. Several documents relating to my dad's pension, which were now my half-brother's responsibility, were not turned in on time, resulting in my dad missing out on a one-time payment of $8,000 and lowering his pension payout by $300 a month. My half-brother then cleaned out my dad's remaining savings, which was about $3,000, not discovered until a month later. Six days afterwards, my father hung himself in the basement. My dad left all of his insurance money and belongings to my mother. Us children were left with only sentimental items. My half-brother was visibly upset and shaking when the will was read. He acknowledged that my mother was receiving everything and left. About a month later, we discovered the missing money. Though he broke no laws because he had power of attorney, we insisted he pay it back. Even offered to let him make payments over a two-year period. He refused, and we've had no contact for two years now. Little did he know that he was in my mom's, which was his stepmother's will. He would receive half of what's currently a $250,000 estate. I suggested to my mother that she remove him from the will. She and I did, and now I'm the sole beneficiary. He stole $3,000, now only to lose out on $125,000 later. This story is titled, Oh my god, we're so sorry we blocked your doorway. Now go get your earmuffs. I've had a long and respectable career in game development. A couple of years ago, I've abandoned it for a cushy corporate job, and now spend most of my days missing game dev. This story takes place about 10 years ago, at the apex of my career. I was the lead on a AAA project. Our parent company was going through changes. We had to move offices three times in one year. Second of the three moves, always intended to be temporary, put us into the basement of an older building, occupied by satellite departments not involved with development. The basement we were given had been empty for years, save for the most distant office. You enter the basement through a dimly lit staircase, then, after you snake through a horror-like movie maze of corridors and interconnected small rooms, you'd eventually arrive at the farthest room of all. A golden plaque was on the door that said, Trademark Compliance Department. Literally no one I knew was ever aware of trademark compliance, even though trademarks were a pretty important part of everything we did. The department consisted of a single trademark attorney and his fresh-faced college grad assistant or paralegal or whatever. The lawyer flipped his frickin' shit when he learned that people were being moved into his basement. For a couple of weeks, he tried desperately to prevent the move, getting all the way to the CEO. The tiny leathery lawyer amazed everyone with his deep booming voice that would climb and climb and climb and pitch as he yelled and screamed and threatened. All his efforts being for naught, our stuff was moved into the basement over one weekend. We spent that following Monday and Tuesday dealing with all sort of setup woes. Power outlets, network connections, breathable air. On Wednesday, two quiet 2D artists came into their L-shaped room, the one with the fancy door to trademark compliance, and found that all of their stuff, chairs, desks, computers, everything, was pushed into the far corner. A walkway of caution tape was set up leading to the compliance door. While we were trying to figure out what the hell had happened, a demigod VP, as close to the company CEO as it gets, walked into our lowly basement trailed by the beaming lawyer. Apparently, our desks had blocked his door. He even had pictures. The demigod hadn't seen them prior to walking down. Once he saw dozens and dozens of close-ups of the desk corner, the VP's face grew less certain. Our desk was blocking his doorway by less than an inch on the side with the hinges. The door opened away from the desk. I'm guessing, even when opened at 90 degrees, the edge of the door was about as wide as the protruding part of the desk. In other words, it was technically blocking the doorway, but no more than the door itself. 
Non-committal as always, the demigod instructed us to make sure that all pathways were clear at all times, and that he expected this would be the last time he had to get involved. I apologized and told him I was moving two people out, and moving just one person in, making sure it was uncluttered as possible. The lawyer answered my apology with a triumphant, serves you right, that's what you get for messing with adults, and welcome to the real world, and this is far from over. He then ordered me to wait right here and came out with a tape measure. We snaked through his entire path from the staircase to his office, measuring clearance from desks and chairs and people's items, and the lawyer bumped into desks and monitors and garbage cans and pushed people sitting in their chairs as if they were garbage cans. He crawled on the floor and marked out a no man's land in chalk. No one was ever allowed to block his pathway or he'd have everyone's jobs. Once all the lines were drawn, and the lawyer retreated to his fortress of smugness, I knew that our slightly unhinged physics programmer with his anime posters and loud clank of his mechanical keyboard would not be moving into the room at all. My revenge was going pro. Now, the issue of sound was discussed more than any other as we were planning a temporary move. Our sound designer had to listen to all sorts of sounds at full volume on different types of speakers, not just on his headphones. If the sound was designed on his headphones and you played it through surround sound speakers, you'd sense it. Our old office had a professionally soundproofed room. Even then, it was a pretty unpleasant thing. Huge sounds could not be heard, but it could be felt. Like an inaudible earthquake, it struck you with primal dread. So we discussed this on and on and on. I wanted a soundproof room. Management wanted headphones. We eventually agreed on a compromise. We just have to accept screams and explosions on speakers while we were in the basement. This decision had also been made and approved by the same VP about a month before the walkway and chalk incident. You can see where I'm going with this. We made the walkway semi-permanent with construction tape. I took pictures and sent an email update to everyone reporting that A, we pledged to keep all pathways cleared at all times, and B, the offending room would have two girls move out and have one sound designer move in. The VP replied with, Thank you, that's great! Notice how the email listed sound designer in an offhand way. This was not my first rodeo. We moved the sound designer and all his equipment into the room. The next morning, explosion started, then stopped. High-pitched screams in the distance, footsteps. My door flew open and the lawyer ran in screaming and said, What the fuck? He dragged me across the street to the VP's office. The VP was not there. The lawyer screamed and jumped and stomped his little feet, left voicemails, then retreated to write an email to the VP, with a CC list that probably went all the way up to President Obama and the Lord Commander of the Night's Watch. I quickly replied that 1. Sound design flaws and issues had been extensively discussed and were deemed a necessary evil. Two, I notified everyone before the fact that the sound designer was moving into that particular room. And three, if I had to keep moving people around every day, I wouldn't be able to hit my milestones. The VP replied the next morning saying, he's right about the milestones, besides, it's temporary anyway. And so, for the next seven months, compliance department was subjected to eight hours a day of non-stop explosions, gunfire, screams, grunts, engine roars, and wet thuds. Once released, our game's sound was singled out for praise in multiple reviews. I put the lawyer's name somewhere in the thank you section in the credits. This story's titled, Disowning Their Daughter, Regretting Forever. This basically happened like three weeks ago. I moved out from my mother's house since I was going off to university to study math and physics. My brother had a girlfriend who I really liked and respected. I soon accepted her as a part of my family. She used to spend a lot of time at our place because her parents were a nightmare. They were pretty poor, which doesn't have anything to do with them being a horrible parent, just for context. But they were also stingy as fuck. Here in Germany, you'll get subsidized money each month for your child to buy them food, provide shelter, warm clothes. Her parents didn't spend her child money on anything for her. She had to sleep in a dark, cold room, buy her own clothes, and got no pocket money. Meanwhile, her parents were gifting themselves smartwatches and laptops for Christmas. My brother's girlfriend had gotten a shampoo bottle with a discount label on it. The only money she got was from her job, being a post girl. That job only amounted to 48 euros total a month, and her bus ticket would already cost her 58 euros. 
so she had to ask her mother to lend her something, which she would have to pay back to her. Her parents didn't want her to move out and go study, when she said she wanted to move together with my brother into the city, where she had gotten an apprenticeship, her mom nearly exploded. She actually had hoped that she wouldn't get the job so she could realize how stupid she was for wanting a good future for herself. You can imagine how much her parents hated my brother. Fast forward, I come home to stay a few weeks at home, visiting friends and relatives. She's a usual at our house, but my mother then told me that she was living here permanently being registered exactly at my home address. I'm a little stunned, as I had suggested that very thing to her a few days before, and she said she didn't want to break ties with her family. But things changed when her mom tried to cut up her prom dress, which had been given by my mother as a present. She was furious about what her mother wanted to do. The mother just explained that since she never got such a nice dress, so why would her daughter? My brother's girlfriend just called my brother, my mother then drove them to her house. They just packed up most stuff that they could carry, and the mom's last words were, You can always come back to us when he's beaten you black and blue. We love you. They pretty much tried to down talk my brother in front of her and everyone. Since this day, she's living with us. Now comes the Jews. Since my mother is really good with law and legal stuff, we've gotten her parents to pay her the child money that they've taken from her and owed her. We also requested for a money support for her, since she has no income. She's only 18, so she'll get a lot of money, plus her child money back paid and the apprenticeship earnings. Also, a little extra from our family. So, after a few days, they realized that they were in a lot of financial doo-doo and had to pay her back 4 months of child support, which they couldn't. They pleaded for the amount to be halved, which my brother's girlfriend could have agreed to, but she just took a pen and wrote, fuck that crossed out their plea, and put it back into the envelope. She now doesn't have anything to do with her family anymore, who tried through multiple means to get to her. She rocks. Hey friends, I hope you enjoyed these stories today. If you want to submit your own stories, my Discord server is in the link below. Also, if you aren't subscribed, hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss future stories. See you guys in the next one.